This conference will now be recorded. Thank you for joining the City of Kingston's Common Council at our Laws and Rules meeting. Today is Wednesday, August 19th. My name is Andrea Schott, the Council President and Organizer for our virtual meetings. Before we begin, we would like to go over a few guidelines to help us navigate the system as efficiently and respectfully as possible. We ask that members of the public and press remain muted and off camera for the length of the meeting. As organizer, I reserve the right to mute anyone who unmutes themselves. Council members and city staff will control their own mute button. Good practice would be to mute yourself if you are not speaking to avoid background noise and feedback. If a council member or staff wishes to speak, they will raise their hands. The chairperson will call on them before they speak by stating their name clearly for our audio listeners. All of our meetings are recorded. Both video and written transcriptions will be made available to this public on the city's website. Although we will not have public speaking tonight, you could submit written comments to the City of Kingston Clerk, Elisa Tinty at emtinty at kingston-ny.gov, or by dropping them off at the drop box located outside the side door of City Hall. We also encourage you to reach out to committee chairs or your ward representative at any time. If you have any audio issues, send a text message to the following number, 845-594-6120. Please note that phone calls won't be answered during the meeting. The number to text again is 845-594-6120. As the organizer for today's meeting, I reserve the right to lock and pause the meeting to eject anyone who has behaved inappropriately. Lastly, at tonight's meeting, we have in attendance Chair Alderman Jeffrey Ventura Morrell, committee members Alderwoman Rita Worthington, and subbing for committee members. So committee members for tonight, Alderman Doug Coop, subbing for Don Tollerman, Alderman Michelle Hirsch, subbing for Patrick O'Reilly, Alderman Tony Davis, subbing for Renny Scott Childress. City staff, city clerk, Elisa Tinty, and Corp Council, Dan Gardenstein. Thank you for your patience. And on behalf of the Common Council, I wish you and your family good health. And I now turn the floor over to Chair Alderman Jeffrey Ventura Morrell. Good evening, this is uh, Jeffrey Ventura Morrell and uh, it's uh, 6.34 and I'm calling this meeting to order. Um, so the, the first, um, the first uh, business is uh, the Hudson Valley Landing uh, property easement. Uh, I spoke to uh, the city engineer today about this, uh, John Schultes, and he's he said he has some questions about it. Um, so um, I don't know if Dan Gartenstein wants to comment uh, on that. Uh, my understanding is that uh, he, the city engineer wanted us to table it until he can do uh, a little bit more research on it. Um, yeah, that was John's request. He made that request today. Uh, we certainly have no objection to it being tabled. Okay. So uh, do we need a motion to table or just postpone the, the discussion? I believe we motion need a motion to table. To it certainly would be we appropriate. Just... OK, is there a motion to table? Motion by uh, older woman Michelle Hirsch, second by Alderman Tony Davis. All in favor? OK. Uh, five zero, uh, so it's tabled. Uh, then we have the um, proposal for rezoning uh, change. And uh, so th these are two separate items, but they're pertaining to the same uh, thing. Uh, proposal to rezone and then the report on the public hearing. Um, and then we have also received uh, recommendations uh, from our request for comments uh, from the Historic Landmarks Preservation, the public, uh, I mean the Planning Board, and the Ulster County Planning Board. Uh, we received uh, from the Ulster County Planning Board, it's not on this agenda packet, but we received those comments last month, so they, they are on that agenda. Um, any uh, on the question? Uh, Yes, Alderman Davis. Alderman Davis here. And so the Park Slope Kingston zoning change report that's in the new business, as well as 
the recommendation on rezoning the Montreux Post address on old business is all one, basically all the same same project, if you want to say. Yes. Um, is there any, uh, have we received all information on this? I know you guys, I wasn't able to get in and sit in on the uh, public uh, and comment period today. And is there enough information to move forward with this? Or is this something that should be tabled into, uh, you can gather more information, et cetera, et cetera, in regard to what might have been discussed in today's uh, public uh, comment section? I agree with that. I, I we have received uh, we received a lot of new information at the public hearing, and also um, it's my understanding. I haven't seen it yet, but uh, it's my understanding that there was a protest uh, petition uh, submitted by some of the neighboring uh, property owners. Um, so I think uh, I think it would be helpful to uh, postpone this and maybe have a special meeting. We're still within. We still have to be within the 90-day deadline uh, to act on this uh, peti on this uh, rezoning petition. But um, I think if we uh, have a special meeting before caucus, that would give us a little bit more time to digest all the information we heard today, and uh, we would still be within the 90-day 90-day uh, time limit. Okay. Uh, Yes, Alderman Davis. Alderman Davis here. And um, I know from reading the uh, about the park slope and this this uh, communication that's great. But, uh, I think uh, um, it said, you know, from the Ulster County Planning Board, and they had a question in regard to the 10 percent in housing. And I know, and from sitting on one a, a previous meeting, that the uh, potential uh, or the property owners had stated that they would that would be included. Is that correct? The okay. So I know that was a question that was on there. And so I just wanted to make sure that I believed in previous communication that they had addressed that. Okay. Yes. In, in the last meeting, they uh, stated, and I'll give them an opportunity to speak. I see them nodding their heads. Uh, they had stated that they would uh, do, they would uh, set, uh, to uh, two uh, two apartments uh, to be affordable uh, to meet the ten percent limit. Uh, Sonia, did, did you want to add anything? Or, yeah, uh, you're uh, correct. Yeah. Yes. You're one hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Sure. Um, any anyone else on the question? Uh, anyone thinks we should vote on this, or should we uh, postpone it uh, and have a special meeting? Uh, what's what's the consensus? Uh, yes, Alderman Davis. Alderman Davis here, and I would I would uh, make a recommendation that you table this so it gives uh, again the uh, laws and rules and committee and a little bit more time to digest what was uh, gathered today and to get any other information that the uh, potential or the property owners might want to submit in regard to. I'm not sure if they sat down on the comment period as well. I'm assuming they did, so that they would might be able to. No. So uh, sorry, I'm sorry, Tony. Um, yeah, we couldn't. We just had too much going on today, so we couldn't sit on the uh, public hearing. But we are more than welcome to uh, any feedback, and we are more than welcome to submit any clarifications that anyone from the committee may need. So Thank that you. being said, again, I would I would recommend or I would propose to table this. So again. Um, all sides have uh, an opportunity to um, digest uh, what might have been discussed today and give any proper feedback and that might need on either side. So, you know, I don't, you know, I'm just filling in, but, you know, I would, I would um, propose that we table this, all these communications to further. Okay. So is that a motion, Tony? That's a motion. Okay. To table, uh, to table the communications. Uh, for Park Slope, Kingston, the zoning change report, as well as the old business recommendations on rezoning into and and to the next meeting and that you guys set set up. All right. Is there a second? Second by Michelle Hirsch uh, on the question of tabling. All right, I'll call for the vote. All in favor? Okay. Five zero. So I just want to make sure, Jeff. So you would be you would be setting up a uh, some point another meeting. And is it going to be 
uh, the day of caucus or are you not sure? Correct. I, I think the day of caucus is the easiest. We already know everybody's available. So, and, and, that, and, that, get, uh, and that gives plenty of time for, uh, that's a week and a half from now. So that gives plenty of time, I think, for, for the Andrea, Andrew, Jeff, could you just communicate that date so everybody who's listening in knows what date that is? Yeah, I'll, I'll I'll schedule the meeting as a separate meeting from caucus, so it's clear. And just while I'm here, uh, Sonia and Andrew, the the public hearing was recorded, so you could go back and and listen to that. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much. Hello, woman Worthington. Yeah, I was just going to uh, make the comment, and maybe you could give out the date again, the extension to receive more comments and. Yes. So uh, yes. So we did. Uh, we extended the public comment uh, period uh, for the public hearing until August 31st, and that will also be the day of caucus. So we'll have our uh, special uh, laws and rules meeting on that same day. So until that day, we can still receive public uh, more public comments. Uh, Sonia and Andrew. Sorry. There is a staticky noise. I'm not sure if it's me. Um, no, I when just got rid we, of it. It's, it was Dan. Um, <laughs> when would we be able to see any sort of report or something that uh, formalizes the answers that you need from us? Um, Michelle, do you want to uh, take this? I'm trying to just get a timeline because uh, so the the public comments, which are extremely important in this situation, um, are accepted until August 31st. So then, uh, are we getting a report of the comments so that we can reply and we can clarify any issues, any any concerns? Or I'm not sure the protocol or the timeline so that's that i just want a clarification on that okay well i i think uh from what we heard uh we we've heard some questions uh on the public hearing today that uh i'll probably uh i'll work with uh the rest of the committee to compose an email maybe and, and send you some questions uh that we can get answers for from you yeah and and we'll We'll try to work on it to give you plenty of time to answer before the before the meeting. Another suggestion, Jeffrey, could be to mm -hmm. a timeline on or like an actual time for the comments so that there's some space between the end of the public comments and the beginning of the special laws and rules meeting for everybody, including council members, to read through and digest. Yes. Consider that too. Yeah, I think usually, uh, yeah, so let's do the public comment until uh, 2 p.m. on that day. Is that, that's usually 10? Well, you already stated during the public hearing that you would leave it open until 5 o'clock on Monday, so you really have to adhere to that. You can't change that now. Oh, I didn't say five o'clock. Public hearing is open until whatever time is stated during the public hearing, and any comments that are received before that time need to be forwarded not only to the council, but also to the applicant, and the applicant has to be given a reasonable period of time um, to respond to whatever comments you get up until five o'clock. Okay, I didn't state a time at the public hearing, though. I just said until the 31st. Are you sure you didn't say a time? I said until August 31st. I didn't state a time. So if there is no time, then do you would you have to establish a time now? And I don't. I mean, I, I guess we're you're looking for some direction on how that is. If right. you didn't set a time, are you setting it now? And you know, my position okay. would be the same thing if you get uh,
You're getting that you're if you don't cut stay out, time, um, during the public hearing is on Monday. You know, shorten that period. You know, I can't understand what Dan is saying. I didn't hear anything, Dan? Can you just repeat that, please? Yeah, you have a lot yeah, of. you staff. stated a date. If you if you stated a date without a time then the general legal interpretation is it is until the close of business, which is five o'clock. Okay. Okay, so you can't just change that now and shorten it. So if you're silent, it means five o'clock. Now that that's cleared up, uh, could we actually schedule the special laws and rules meeting for Tuesday? That gives everybody some time to do a, uh, go through the comments, including the applicants. I mean, the drawback to that, of course, is that that is the day of council meeting. But could that be an option? I mean, what are everybody's thoughts on that? I'm fine with that. Yes, Tony? Yes, Alderman Tony Davis here. Yes, if, 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 if and council is, Corp Council is stating that you know you have to give comments up until 5 p.m. now because it was stated the 31st, and you want the applicant to have a time to digest this and and the committee in, and as well as the committee members and the council, then you, you most likely probably should schedule special laws and rules the day of Common Council prior to that, so we all have you know everybody has time to uh, okay. look over the material. All right, so does everybody agree to have the special laws and rules meeting on September 1st at, um, should we say 6 o'clock or 6.30? 6.30. So Tony, as Alderman Hirsch, Tony Davis and I, uh, Doug Coop, we're all filling in, so I think you have to check, right, with every, the regular. Yeah, thing. that's what I was going to say. Can we, can you wait to pick a time? Is that possible? That's good. Fine. Right. So the date will still be September 1st. You just got to check with your other committee members, Jeffrey, to see what time is good for that. Correct. All right. Thank you. Um, so Would we, yes. Could we get some sort of a note when you guys decide a, an email just telling us the timeline and the yes. date? Oh, yeah. Time. That's right. all we need. I'll, I'll let you know as soon as I hear from the other committee members. Uh, uh, as, soon as, I, as soon as I have confirmation for the date, I'll let you know. And we'll watch the public hearing and we'll look forward to the other comments. Okay, thank you. All right, uh, so that concludes the new business. Uh, then old business, we have uh, the Charter Commission. I believe uh, we are not uh, acting on this. Uh, Andrea, is that correct? We need uh, we needed more um, more time to to do some research. Well, yeah, if we could just wait until September's meeting, I'd appreciate that. Just because there's so many people away, and I just want to make sure that as many people's voices are heard on this. Right, and uh, yeah, and and how we had left it last time was that we were uh, going to invite the mayor to the meeting uh, so that we could decide what the next step will be. And uh, basically there are three ways that we can uh, establish the charter commission if we decide to go that way. Uh, if we decide to do that, uh, one would be the mayor appoints. Uh, the second option would be the common council appoints or we could do a combination of both. Um, so so we, we would like to consult with the mayor uh, what he, how he would like to take part of this. Um, okay, so uh, moving on, uh, the next two uh, items on the agenda, I uh, spoke to Alderman Tollerman right before this meeting. He wants us to uh, postpone discussion on these, uh, the food truck legislation and the commercial vacancy tax. Um, he's still uh, working on, on these items. And I believe for the mobile food truck legislation, he was uh, proposing to uh, withdraw it from consideration. And so he does a little bit more research on the matter, uh, but uh, we can discuss that at the next meeting when he's present. Um, and, uh, and the last one I already uh, 
mentioned, we received the comments from the HLPC and from the planning board regarding the rezoning petition. If anybody has any comments about that, or uh, this doesn't require action. Uh, yes, all the woman Hirsch. Hirsch. Hi. Um, are the rights still here, or no? Did they leave? I think they left. Oh, okay. I just had a um, question for them, and I'll I'll take it up with them regarding the um, maximum rent amount that uh, they could charge in order for two apartments to be have a voucher used to satisfy the affordable housing component. Yeah, and and you sent an email about that. That was very useful information. Thank you. Okay, you're welcome. Okay, uh, so that concludes uh, the agenda. Uh, we had a couple months ago, we were discussing um, zoning uh, law. Uh, there was an issue with um, the building department uh, interpretation of, of a zoning law uh, and, and the uh, threshold uh, that a zoning, I mean, yeah, a zoning uh, permit, uh, not a zoning, uh, Building permit would expire after six months if there was nothing, uh, nothing on it. Um, I, uh, we had the committee had decided that I would send an email to the mayor requesting more information. Uh, I sent him an email on June 19th, I believe. Uh, I got a response, but the response uh, didn't answer some of the questions I had asked. So I sent a follow up on July 2nd. Uh, and I still haven't heard from him about that. Uh, in the email, I asked uh, to see the documents that the building department used to make their determination. Uh, I asked for the building department to give us a report of what it would take for them to enforce this portion of the, um, of the code. And I also asked if we were to change it, uh, what, uh, what the building department would like that change to look like. Uh, I know that uh, the city has been stretched, uh, city personnel has been stretched lately, so I, I told the mayor we would um, we would wait uh, for his response uh, and, and to take his time, so uh, I haven't heard back from him. That was about a month ago, uh, but I just received uh, notice that uh, the the building permit that started this this whole situation, which was the building permit for the uh, Irish Cultural Center, uh, expired on Monday. So I just wanted to bring that to your attention, uh, just to keep in mind. Um, and anything else to add before I call uh, to adjourn? Okay, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion by Tony Davis, is there a second? Second by Doug Coop. All in favor? Okay, we're adjourned. Thank you. You all Good picked night. a nice night to sub, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I know. This is probably the, the yes. quickest laws and rules meeting I've had. That'd be the quickest <laughs> one I've been to. Yeah, that's good because I just got back off the road from a. Uh,